I'm gonna make a very short video about this topic and I might come back and do a more detailed video at a later time the government I keep hearing this talk about the government what the government needs to do and many people advocating for the government needs to do this and we owe we are owed this by the government it's been 400 plus years and the government owes this to us yes I understand and believe me before I go into this quick video I want to reiterate again I am all for the government doing something I'm all for reparations don't get it twisted however how, however what I don't hear in these type of conversations when they talk about the government to me they seem to be talking about some type of abstraction what they don't put in place is the people element within the government okay now there are a lot of people that work for the government yes I know a lot of African Americans work in the government but the, the vast majority of people who work in positions of power within the government are European Americans so you need to understand something when you talk about the government you're not talking about some type of abstraction you're talking about real life people with their own biases and their own prejudices that's a reality you can't get over so you have to keep in mind when it comes to passing a law that's going to benefit some someone who doesn't look like them case in point African Americans if the majority of people who are in power are European Americans they're not going to be really in favor of passing those type of special programs special benefits special set aside programs I know I know I know they do it for corporations but you gotta you have to understand African Americans are not corporations I, I just want to make that perfectly clear can the government do something of course they can but you got I, I just told you you got to remember you're dealing with real people not some type of abstraction there's no real such thing as a government that's an illusion really you're dealing with real people in real positions that pass real laws and I already told you they have their own prejudices and their own biases and this is we know this to be fact how many racist um politicians there are there are quite a few so you have to keep that in mind when you talk about the government so I, I, like I said, I, just, I don't want to make this video too long, but that's the only thing I really don't hear too much about that kind of talk when I hear the government needs to do what government needs to do. And I go back to my original question. What are you planning to do in the meantime? I mean, because some of these people, well, I, I, I'll call the name people like Miss Cornell and uh, I guess um, the other fellow the, with a law degree, they, they seem to believe, I don't know his name, and I apologize for not knowing his name, and I'm, I don't have anything against either one of them to make some good points at times. However, I'm still asking the same question. What do you plan to do if government doesn't do anything for another two to five years? Can African Americans in the state we are in right now can you afford to sit and wait two to five years before you take action? I mean, they seem to be, when I hear, watch some of the videos, seem to be against doing for self. They say, well, doing for self, can't do it because doing for self. And, and they'll find an example to solidify their point. Again, they do have some points. However, the ideology of sitting by and waiting for government seems to me like you're telling people to sit in their hands and don't do anything until the great savior which would be government comes in and save people well, that's the same philosophy to me as waiting for somebody who's dead to come back and save you some people waiting for a savior I mean that, that that's just my mind maybe I'm wrong and if I'm wrong I apologize however I just cannot sit still and idly wait for government to do something now what we need to understand is as a as a people is you got to get your mind correct because let's just say the government comes in and say we we'll give you all reparation x amount of money what do we do with it for the vast majority of us we're going to spend it right back in the same hands of the people we're competing with and after a period of time we wouldn't have anything besides some shiny stuff with which at the time would be all outdated because time goes on and you know technology new, new technology comes out constantly 
But see, we still wouldn't have too many industries created because we don't think on that particular type of level. So if you don't get to the mind of the people, when you do have something in place where you, you do have a, a sudden windfall of money or whatever it is they might do if the government does take action, the people the people's mind are not actually ready to actually deal with those um, that type of um circumstance. And I heard you talk again in one of your other videos, Miss Cornell, about um financial illiter um uh, financial literacy is BS. That's not a hundred percent true because again, if going back to the example, if you had a sudden windfall of money, a lot of us we don't have financial literacy and also we don't have the discipline. So before long, that money be gone right back into the hands. We have good stories to tell, but we wouldn't have any really substantial um changes in, in our communities. I mean, other than a lot of brand new cars outside the streets and nice clothes and shoes and TVs and all kind of stuff like that and you know, but realistically, would we wouldn't have any long lasting changes because we don't understand the concept of doing for self. Yes, that's right. I circle right back to doing for self. At some point, you're gonna have to learn how to do for self. So even if government comes into the picture, that'll be a bonus to us. Like, okay, cool. Government giving us X, Y, Z. Oh, oh, no problem. Government's going to give us X amount of acres to farm. Cool, no problem. Whatever they give you, cool, no problem. It's a bonus. But this, to me, to sit and wait and say government owes you this and they need to do it, that's a great philosophy. But I am not for sure how, if, if that's going to actually uh, ever pan out into reality at least not in my lifetime maybe my children or maybe my grandchildren who, who not even born but <laughs> maybe but right now I, I don't foresee it happening if i'm wrong i'm wrong i would be the first to apologize i'm never too big to apologize i just don't like the idea of sitting there putting all our hopes on government again the government is the government is in the hands of the european american let's let's be real about that look at the president look at the vice president look at everybody else in high positions in, within the cabinet so when you say the government remember it's the people within the government the people actually real life people that are actually running the government and that's a factor a lot of people seem to exclude out of the equation so now you can understand why we have not done all the deals and so forth that were actually promised to us were actually reneged upon, such as the 40 acres and the mule. Haven't seen it yet. Now, we could really use the land. We're not, not so much the mule, but it can give us the money of what the mule is worth, but um, we can really use the 40 acres right now. But again, that's all. That, that's my only gripe with the situation, and I'll end it again with this. If government does not do anything for the next year or two, what do you guys propose we do? Continue to put pressure on the government? You see, they can afford to wait us out. Can we afford to wait them out? That's the kind of questions I ask myself. They have all the money, like you say, which is true. They got all the best land, which is true. They got the connections in the high places, which is true. So, which means they have the decks, we have the deck stacked against us. So, the deck is stacked against us. We can't afford to be waiting. That's like someone on death row waiting for an appeal. We on limited time, man. We, we, we got to get going. So, I'm all for government doing something, but at some point, we're going to say, you know what? In the meantime, let's see what we can do to do for self. And when we do for self, you got to get in your mind, you have to support each other. If you don't want to support each other, you might as well go ahead and just tattoo a tombstone on your forehead and call it a, let's call it a day. Because if we don't support each other, that's it. It's done. Okay, that, that's, that's the point we're at right now. If you, we don't support each other in whatever endeavor we do, whether it be business or whatever have you, it's done. And that on that idea also when it comes to um, supporting black business because some of us have this uh, this notion that when you go into a black store which i'm kind of pivoting a little bit the same level of service or the same level of products 
Now that's not fair because you, you're talking about companies who had years, over 10 years, over 50 years to perfect that trait. And you're expecting someone, an African American or whatever African uh, country you might be in, to have the same level of services and the same level of business and the same level of um, products. That's not a realistic expectation. You're setting them up for failure because some of you got that attitude. Well, I don't like it because they don't have this kind of product in there and their prices are too high. The reason the prices are high is because of, comp of competition. It's hard to compete with these big chains out there like the Walmarts and the Safeway and so forth. It's extremely hard. When those kind of companies come in, they shut a lot of other companies down. So if you want them to have better, better service and so forth, you got to support. You have to support. If you don't support, to be out of business and then you'll be, man, we need more black businesses, man. How'd that work? You need more black businesses, but you don't support the ones you have. Does that make any sense? So you just want to say you have black businesses, but don't support the black businesses you do have. Or the black electrician, the black plumber, whatever, whatever have you. And you hold them to such high standards. But yet the, the other companies, you hold them to such low standards. They, they can rip you off. And you will still use them again. But anytime you have just one problem, just one problem. With an African American business person. Whether it be a store or, or a tradesman, whatever. That's it. I'm never using them again. And you really believe you're saying something, not realizing you're actually cutting off your nose to spite your face. In summation, getting government to do something is a great idea, yes. But you have to have a plan B. And that plan B is going to be doing for self, at least in my opinion. We have to learn to do for self and also we have to learn to support each other. That's just the way I see it going forward to me that's what I see we're gonna to have to do to get out of the condition we are in you have to change the mindset the mindset every change starts with the mind every revolution starts within the mind of a few individuals 